Hello guys, welcome back. This is Valesa from Alay Refurbish and today we're gonna give this Kirby tall girl a major makeover. Don't go anywhere and stick around for today's transformation. This is too good to be true. That's what I told myself a few days ago after seeing this arch cabinet being sold through Facebook Marketplace and I couldn't believe they were only asking $45. I reached out hesitantly since normally I'm too late when the price is this good. Pushing all my doubts aside, I reached out and thankfully it was available. However, there was a little small price to pay. The seller lived an hour and 20 minutes from us. Luckily, my husband had the day off the next day and after driving through some dirt roads in the middle of nowhere he was able to get it for me yes it was a bit of a drive but even with the long distance this cabinet is worth it anything similar that's made out of solid construction can go for anything between 1200 to 3600 dollars online can you believe it As beautiful as the shape edge front glass is, in my efforts to update this girl that's made out of solid oak, the glass and mirror will need to come off. The previous owner had screwed two by fours trying to keep the glass safe during transport, but I need to take them off before removing the glass. The vacuum was attached by a bunch of staples that needed to be pulled out. This part was a bit time consuming, so I was extra thankful to have another set of extra hands to help out. Something that I encountered that's unique to this project compared to other glass cabinets that I have worked on is that the glass was not only kept in place by a piece of rubber, there were also staples that were keeping that rubber piece in place. Let's just say that those were more nerve wracking to remove because again, we're trying to keep this glass in one piece. All the pivot hinges, latches, and the top light need to come off. to make sure that I don't lose the screws. I can see myself doing that very easily. <laughs> Since I'm gonna be replacing the mirror on the back and the glass shelves with wood, I'm heading to the store to buy some supplies. For the backing, I'm buying a quarter inch 4x8 red oak panel and for the shelves, I'm buying a 3 quarter inch 4x8 classic oak panel. After loading the materials into the back of our car, we head at home and use the measurements of the original shelves and backing to cut the new wood ones. Hi friends, so coming to you from my living room because I wanted to remind you of this arch cabinet that I refinished a while back. If you haven't watched the video, I'll add a tag here and I love it. I'm still obsessed with it and I think it really matches what I have going on in my home. Could I refinish this arch cabinet that I'm working on the same way that I refinished this one? Yes. And would it sell really fast that way? I believe so. However, you know that I'm all about trying something different. So I think I'm going to try a lighter color for this one that I'm working on. There is a slight chance though that if I think that this <laughs> new one that I'm working on turns out better or looks better in my space than this one, 
that I'll be keeping the new one and selling this one. That's just something that we're gonna have to wait and see. This cabinet has to be the cleanest piece that has come through my shop so far. And I'm just doing a quick wipe down using a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water to get rid of any dust that's in the surface. I'm almost afraid to say this, but the frame doesn't have any major dings or scratches that I need to repair. So using a fine grit and my surf prep sander, I'm gonna get rid of any of the sheen the surface has. That way the primer will have a better chance to adhere. Once everything was sanded, there was plenty of dust left over that I needed to just get rid of with a TSP alternate in order to have a clean surface before priming. In addition, I'm gonna be spraying a light coat of Vinchilac Base White Primer. This one dries in 15 minutes and it can be painted only after 30 minutes, so it's great if you just wanna get your project done and out of the way. I'm crossing my fingers I have enough of it because because if I'm honest, I don't really want to go to the store in the middle of the project. I ended up applying two light coats over the frame. And after letting that second coat dry for half an hour, I came back with a 220 grit sanding sheet and gave everything a scuff sand just to get rid of any texture that sometimes primer can leave. remember all the nails or staples that we remove to be able to take the gloss off well of course now that there's little holes in there they're tiny but you know what um i'm going for a clean look so i'm gonna be covering all of those up since the holes left by the staples were shallow i only waited about 15 minutes came back and sanded those areas to make sure that they were flush against the rest of the surface. Once I remove the dust that that created, my surface will be ready for paint. I'm using farmhouse paint, tan leather. You guys see me use it on a previous project. Today, my paint color is matching my cold brew pretty closely. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of water. And this time, instead of rolling it, I'm spraying it. After filling up my Flexio 3500 sprayer from Wagner, I applied two coats of this warm tone. One thing that's different about this all-in-one paint to other paints is that you need to wait several hours between coats. This will prevent the second coat from softening and pulling up the previous coat. The can indicates that priming is not necessary. The reasoning behind why I do it is because I never know how the new owner is gonna treat the piece and I want this new paint job to last as long as possible. and the shelves of our cabinet and I'm gonna be using the color Simply White and Early American. They're both from Ming Wax, they're oil based. I'm gonna be using two different pads to apply each one and the application process is wet and wet, meaning while well, Simply White still wet, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of the Early American. This is gonna create a really beautiful, warm, neutral color that I believe will pair beautifully with the color that we have going on with the rest of our cabinet. So let's do this. Using my staining pad, I start rubbing the stain all over the surface. Normally, at this point, I would use a blue shop towel to wipe off any excess, but instead of doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and apply a coat of the Early American. This is a really beautiful brown, and you're gonna notice that as you apply it on the wet Simply White, it's gonna create a beautiful blend of neutral colors. 
And after letting this blend sit for about five minutes, you're gonna come back with that sharp paper towel and wipe off any excess of the blend. The same wood treatment was applied twice. While this dries, I'm gonna go back inside and add real wood veneer edging to the shelves. So I'm using iron on real wood veneer edging here. I have red oak, which is the same kind that I have on the shelf. So first I'm just gonna do like a rough measurement and leave a little bit of excess on this side over here. I noticed that if I use a piece of tape, that helps me get it in the right position. Just up. So that's where this tape comes from. I just put it on the other side. It's like having an extra set of hands back there. I'm gonna roll any air bubbles with a roller that I can't find anywhere. So I'm using the plastic spatula and just putting some pressure as I glide it to make sure that the glue is doing its job. I try to be careful and move slowly with this part so that I don't cut more than I need to. It's easier to go back and make the cut straight when you haven't cut enough, but it's a lot harder to to add on when you overdo it. Then you can just make things a little smoother with sanding black. I'm gonna have to vacuum after I'm done here. Before I could stain the shelves, I needed to make sure that those tags from the manufacturer were taken off. And then I just gave everything a good sand. The same treatment that was applied to the backing is the same one that I'm gonna use for these shelves. I use an oil-based stain on the shelves and the backing so I need to make sure that my top coat is also an oil base and I decided to try this wipe on poly that I've heard really good things about it's also from being wax. take the parts of the cabinet that were painted with a water-based paint I'm using my go-to general finishes high performance top coat brain it using my flexio 3500 so let's get started since Evolution Paint already has a top coat built in, I ended up applying only one coat of General Finishes top coat. As far as the oil base wipe on poly, I felt the urge to wipe off any excess because it was looking more shiny than I'm accustomed to. But within 20 minutes, the top coat was completely absorbed into the wood. The next day, once everything had dried, we added the new backing, the hardware, the new wood shelves, and I can't wait to show you the after of the stall girl. Here's a quick glance at how the stall girl looked when she arrived to the shop. Even though I had questioned the pink color and how it would go with the wood tones, I'm loving the modern yet classic look this beauty has. If you were to buy a cabinet for your own home, would you choose the black one I refinished a few months ago? Or would you choose this blondie version? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>